Healthy. I'm your host, Prince Electrodiamond, and today I am here with Izzy Jones, who is a drag queen who has a um, graphic art done by an artist named Clifford that she told me she wanted to plug. How are you doing today, Bev? Yes, I am doing pretty well. I'm definitely gay in the city. The rain was pretty homophobic today, but we made it work. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so the art with Clifford, it was something that I really, really loved. It's old, it's from December 2021, but it was something, because you know with artists, it wasn't just like, okay, I want I want you to do this artwork for me, and okay, these are a few of my inspirations, and I'm just going to send it to you, you do it. He even called it a collaboration, which was so dope, because I wanted to do something It was based off of a number that I had did before. It was, since it is Pride Month, and you know, intersexuality, so since I am Black and I am a part of the alphabet community, yeah. you know, it, it, I'm always, it's always something. So I had wanted to do something that was a space off of a speech that I did by Portia O. It was titled The Angry Black Woman, but I was like, okay, I want to make it into like a superhero. So I had did some artwork with that, and I had went back and forth with him. I was like, okay, she has braids. Okay, look, she needs baby hairs. She needs this. So there's like little things that I really wanted to make sure that it captured the Black experience but also the queer experience. Like, so you know how uh, it was like Superman. It's a, it's a, it's a bird. It's a planet Superman. Yeah. So in my artwork, I had him put, it's a man, it's a woman. No, it's the doll. Okay. So it was like stuff like Word. that, that was like little things or how, you know, how like Batman has his like Batman symbol, like in the back, like, you know, when he needs to save or rescue someone, yeah. the little bat symbol that comes to the sky. I had a little unicorn in the back. So it was just like little Word. stuff that I was like, that I want to feel like, okay, this is definitely very me. It's very queer, but also it's very black. Cause, and then, and like my fan, you know, I always keep a fan with me. That is, you know, it's a part of her brand. I always have a fan with me. And on the fan, I'm a Libra. So I had a little Libra symbol on it. So it was like little things like that. And I definitely want to eventually start making merch on it. So if you know some good uh, merch makers and stuff, hit the girl up. But yes, right. and that even got Jada Hall to eventually follow me, which was so cool. Which I, And she was a fan. I was a fan of hers even before you know, she followed me. I was like, okay. I was like, I was a fan of her season. And then she had, because he's got commissioned to do stuff by, by like Plastique Tiara, by Sonique. So by a bunch of the girls. Yeah. So the fact that he did mine, I was so thankful. I was so blessed and appreciative. So I definitely want to do some more with that artwork and I'm going to bring it back out before Pride Month is over. So. Works. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Angry Black Woman, did you do that at um, Pride last year? Yes, I did. Okay, work. So yes, I actually saw you. I actually saw you do that. That was really good. Thank you, thank you. I, I did do that. I, yes, I think it's it's so important because I I know when I had started. Am I hopping over you or am I okay? No, you good. Okay, when I had started, I want to make sure I'm clear. When I started, you know, into the you know cross dress and drag scene, I was the only black doll on the trash coast at that time. So there was girls that were before me. I I want to be clear. But I'm saying when I started, Twig was, which you may not know, Twig Street, Twig McQueen was kind of about to exit. So I started March, Twig did her last performance in January. So when I started, I was yeah. literally the only black one, you know, that, that was like up and coming. So it was tricky for me to kind of get the, figure out where I was gonna go, like, you know, trying to figure things out. So I was almost up to, and it was Black History Month, it was February 2020, I will get it right before Miss Rona came and stormed the girls. Um, it was I had we were I was at the distillery, you, you defunct distillery now defunct distillery R.I.P. I love the distillery, and we were doing shows there. So I had did a show with that. There was mostly yeah. white people in the audience because you know it's Stuart Jensen. You know how y'all get down. Anyhow, I, but look, I love all audiences. But uh, <laughs> but the fact that I did such a powerful speech there, there was two black women there. They had loved it. There was even two Middle Eastern men there that were like, hey, that was a great that was a great number. So it was something I was like, okay, I need to make sure I kind of always keep alive no matter what. So that's where the artwork came and that's why I was like, okay, my first pride performance that I'm ever gonna do and the first pride coming back after 1920, almost four years, because the last pride we had in the Treasure Coast was in, well, in St. Lucie County was in 2018. We didn't have one again until 2022. So I was like, okay, the next part we're gonna have, it needs to, I need to make an impact and something that people can remember. So I did that one and I, I, I love that number. That's definitely one of my favorites. I even yeah. did it for, and I also brought the first Black Girl Magic show onto the Treasure Coast and I did, that was my opening number I did there. So that's something mm -hmm. I always wanna make sure. Yeah, it's, yeah I, I'm like, it's so important to take up space. And I think, 
you know, we'll get there. But it's just important to take up space and let people know I am here, I am black, and I'm definitely queer. <laughs> right. So work. So are you originally from here? No. Where do you think I'm originally from? I, I just have... want you to guess. Um well you do have kind of I would say you kind of have like a little bit of a New York attitude, so maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, fair, fair. Um, well, I don't know if take that as a compliment or not, but anyhow, okay, <laughs> so, you know, don't get started. We want I, us to go I right. love New York. Like, I would totally live yeah. there if I could afford to. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll, I'll take it for the men, then I'll go back home. Uh, so, no, I was originally born in this place called Meridian, Mississippi. I mean, Mississippi is cool. I can't tell you much about it only because my dad was in the Navy. So I literally just dropped off there. And yeah. then my birth, you know, I was, a, you know, I was a squid. So uh, I lived in Virginia a little bit. Most of my life was in Florida. Then I spent like a year and a half in Las Vegas. Ooh. What, but I was a minor, but it still was fun, though. Because yeah. like Florida. OK, OK, because no Tino shade. So Florida, Mississippi's great because they had a lot of, you know, great, amazing people were born there. Like, I mean, freaking Brandy, iconic. But for me, I, in even the part of Florida that I usually was raised in, which is like the Fort Pierce, Fort St. Lucie area, it was very small. So when I went there uh, to Vegas, because my it was just at, like at random, my uh, aunt and uncle were up there. They were living there. So I was like, OK, we're going to go there for the summer. So the summer thing, and to be fair, honest, I never said this before, I had like failed middle school in eighth grade. So I'm like, okay, I, I, all my friends are going to go on to high school. I never said this before. All my friends are going to go on to high school. I'm like, okay, so I'm just going to go to a whole new state, a whole different part of the U.S. because, you know, Florida and like the West Coast, whole opposites. And yeah. we started a new life there. And I think it was so awesome because it opened my mind up. I saw people, look, I'm not going to be politically correct because at the time, my 14, 15 year ring, it wasn't. There was a girl there that was dressed a lot more androgynous. So she would have just like, her hair was like middle part straight, no makeup on, but she'd have like Adidas track sh uh, pants, some like some Vans on, and then that was it. It wasn't, you know, oh, makeup yeah. and curl, like, no. And then there was a guy there, you know, just keep it basic. And, but he was definitely very more uh, feminine. He had, he grew out his hair. He was wearing the stuff the girls were wearing, like, like the pants that was like the cute, you know, like the cute little Ugg boots the girls and the gays that were yeah. back in the day. So it was just like, and I would stare at them and they probably look at me like, what's wrong with me? But I st stared at them because I was like, I felt like I saw myself, you know, in real life for like the yeah. first time. I'm like, these people look like me. These people kind of dress like me, you know? So that 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 was an eye-opening experience. That's why it's always good to live other places outside of wherever you're born because you it's interesting to see how the people live, how they talk, the music they listen to. It can really, you know, open up your mindset. Well, I totally get that. I am someone who, when I basically like dropped out of college, I literally ran to Orlando because I'm like, I want out of. I, I've lived. The I've lived here. to go to Orlando. That's oh yeah. boy. Although I, I didn't. As I say, I didn't go to the nice part of Orlando. I lived in the hood. So like, <laughs> oh boy. Well, was the food good at least? Yeah. Of course. Okay, see, if nothing else, the hood is at least going to give you some good food. So, amen to that. <laughs> and some good dick. Um. <laughs> true, 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 yeah. true. I can't, I can't disagree with you on that one. <laughs> so, okay, so what was it like for you growing up as a kid, like, moving around a lot? Um, it was fine. The thing is, when I got to about five, six, I was, I was kind of somewhat stationed in Florida. But the only thing is when I first went to school, I was a Christian, you know, private school, you know, you know, she was a very Christian young lady. I still am. Don't get it twisted. But um, I was there and it was like five or six kids in the class and it was only me and this other girl. Okay. Everyone else in there was, you know, of the Caucasian descent. And it was just me and this other girl. I was, you know, obviously me and then she right. was uh hawaiian so we were the only two people of color there and the thing is for with me with friends are making people i do better in small groups i have anxiety i know that's like a new popular word but i really do mostly social which makes yeah. no sense to what i'm doing you know hello but mostly social so in big groups i'm kind of like and i think i got a lot of that too also 
from when I first started in school, you know, pre-K, those are your formative years too. It was in small groups. So I'm used to getting, so I was used to getting taught smaller, more, you know. And the thing is, it was just me and this girl. We were good friends. They they said that that was my girlfriend. But, mm, little do I know. Anyhow, but, <laughs> but that's another story. But um. I, I, I really enjoyed like small groups and I was able to really make friends with just this one girl and people were like, okay, you need to make friends with, you know, other kids in the classroom. And it's like, why? I got my one friend. I'm good. Like, you know, I don't need to have a bunch of people right. to be friends, but in Florida was, it was eventually fine once I kind of made it work. But I think, you know, moving around definitely helped open my horizons. Yeah. Well, I will say I get social anxiety. The thing that mm -hmm. I love is that with drag, people like want to come up and talk to you. So like, I'm not going to start yes. any conversations, but it's like, come up and talk to me. Like, yes, I know yes. I'm tall. I wear sunglasses. You may think I'm a bitch, but like, I'm actually kind of, I'm already well, you nice. Are. <laughs> well, <laughs> depends, on what time, well, depends on what time of day, you know, depends on what time of day. She's nice. Yeah. Well, I am not. Hmm, I'm trying to think, am I a bitch? <laughs> Oh God! If you have to think, to think, yeah, you no. probably are, and it's fine. Own it, own it. If you are, I, own it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit shady. I'm shady, but I always try and like yes. with the shade. I try and make people like laugh while I'm doing it. Right, right. You're not trying to be like vindictive or trying to like, like no. hurt people. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> yeah. So, what was it like for you coming out? Oh, which time? Oh boy! Oh gosh, girl, we're gonna get this. This is gonna be a bit of a story. Uh, okay, so um, when I was younger, it was always like asked or thought about. You know, it was always stuff that was always talked about in my yeah. family, especially because you know, a black and Native American family. You know, from the South. You know, is is there were some things you know that they just weren't, especially being Christian. That's some stuff you know they ain't going for. So. I remember it was like even before coming out, I would like put on my mom, which she's an older lady. She had, you know, survived cancer stuff. So she didn't have the cutest wigs or shoes, but I would still try to put on, <laughs> you know, her little hush puppies and then her, her little Mary Kay wigs and stuff and try to, you know, it was like stuff secretly. Then my dad had caught me one time. I had to yeah. slip out of them. So it was like always undercover. And I remember one time I was maybe seven or eight because I have two sisters that are 16, 18 years older than me. So, wow. you know, they're almost like a second set of parents. So yeah, it's just a little crazy. We'll talk about that later. But they would ask me, I think I had like a rap or something on my head. I was in front of the fan. They were like, do you want to, do you feel like a girl or a boy? Do you want to be a girl or a boy? I was like, I I'm like, I'm a boy. But it's, I said it knowing that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to say. You know, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, I feel something else, but, or I feel more, you know, different, but okay, I'll just go with that. But it happened when we were in Vegas. At one time, me, uh, it was me, my mom, and my nephew were sharing my phone. So I was on uh, SeanCody.com. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, look, moving on along. Uh, so I was on there. You know, you know, with Joe, you're on sites and stuff back in there. This was yeah. 2012. Mama wasn't tech savvy. So I was just like, you know, they have like pictures in the preview. So I was looking at that. Yeah. So my mom had looked at the phone. She looked at that. And then she asked me, she was like, uh, you know, are you a part, you know, are you, are you a queen? And I was like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No. Even though she saw the stuff in my phone, what I was looking yeah. at, and they saw pictures and stuff. And it, actually my nephew had looked at my, through my phone too. And I was on this one website. It was like, it was like the young little kids and stuff were at, and I had, you know, some scandalous pictures. They weren't too bad. It wasn't, it was kind of what we all were, you know, the whole posing in your underwear, putting on shirt, yeah. you know, sitting up on the, you know, the basic stuff that the, 14, 15, 16 year old kids are doing at the time. That website was called uh, Tagged. So I was on there and they they kind of saw some stuff. So I kind of got outed ish in a way, but I'm kind of happy that I did. Because later on that night, I went and told my mom, I was like, okay, yes, I'm a queen. And she, and she was like, okay, I got to go tell your dad now because my dad was still in Florida. So she was on the phone yeah. with my dad. To this day, I never know, I didn't know what my dad actually had to say. I'm sure he wasn't enthused or happy about it but then the day my mom because that was during a time where uh a lot of deaths and stuff were happening and you know and then me like 2011 2012 with like for kids and stuff being gay or getting but you know they were like there was a lot yeah. of suicides that were happening at the time so my mom was like look my child is not gonna be you know whatever 
is not going to be one of those statistics of you know dying and you know killing yourself right. because of that you know so yeah it, it was it was a process so that was one coming out work so obviously... and that was like, i was like 15. see so young like yes yes so... well, what do you mean so young how old were you when i came out i was 18. like oh wow but, I mean, so you were you were three years older than me then. Okay, so that's yeah. not you like so young, like. Well, okay, so to my coming out, so mm -hmm. I came out. I will say, in some ways, I was fortunate because I only had to come out to one parent because I came out um four months after my mom died, so it was oh, only my you. dad. Thank you. Okay. So it was my dad, and then like I have an older sister who like. I had to come out to and like my sister was very supportive and so was my my dad it took a okay. it took him because i originally came out as bi it took him a little bit of time for him <laughs> to realize that like i was mm -hmm. actually gay like right but the person I, the, the person bi I, gay drag queen pipeline <laughs> yeah the person i shouldn't have come out to who i did was i came out to a youth minister oh uh -oh. Just wait, we're going there. Um, so uh -oh. I told him about this performance idea I had with like a knife and how I'd like practiced it. It was like I was doing like dramatics and theater stuff. So basically mm -hmm. he um left the room. He came back in about 10 minutes later. He said, you have one of two options. Either you're coming with me or I'm calling the cops. And what? I went with him. To get a psyche eval, which I passed, he made it seem like I was lying during the psyche eval, and as a result, I got locked up in a mental institution for sixty-four hours. Oh my! Oh my, Lanta! Oh wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That is insane. That's insane. Yeah. Wow! Oh my gosh, that's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They deemed it a mental illness. It's it's crazy. It's wow. Oh my gosh. And then after I got out, he tried to like put me with this counselor who tried to like pray the gay away. <laughs> Gotta love that one too. That 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 that's the old faithful pray yeah. the gay away. That's funny. That is funny. Haven't we all tried that? It's, it's look. <laughs> that's funny. So as that's funny. Izzy said before, good Christian woman, I am someone who left the church and became agnostic, but that's just... <laughs> that's each, fair. And the thing is, yeah, yeah, to each their own, and I never try to put my, you know, on anybody yeah. or how, you know, because everyone has their own journey. So who am I to sit there and say, you need to do, like, no, no. It's like, no. I, but I, what I will say is, I do think it's important to have some sort of belief system in something. I think that that is definitely important. It doesn't, whether it's the trees, the birds and the bees, something I do think is important. Whether it's just karma, something, it's, it's good to have a belief system in something. I do think yeah. it, it can help kind of be a guiding path or force in your life. But it doesn't necessarily have to be what everyone else believes in, you know? I mean, you I've, have to do I've, what works for you. Yeah, I've heard that before. Like, I've interviewed a witch before. I'm like, some of that like witch and herbalism stuff, I actually find kind of fascinating. Right, right. And and it's like, so I'm not like opposed to believing in anything. It's just I want to believe mm -hmm. in something that like at least to me has like some sort of like facts and like knowledge to it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. God, let me stop before I start sounding too judgy. Um <laughs> <laughs> just a tad. Just a smidge. Anyway. <laughs> so what made you want to start doing drag? I mean, look, for me and in, in my head, you know, I, I have, you know, main character syndrome and everything's always about me. So I always thought I was going to be somebody. Even when I was young, my family was like, OK, you could be an actor. Kind of, sort of am. It was like, OK, you, <laughs> I could see you being some sort of something. Like, I remember, uh, like, when my sister, because she was stayed out in Jacksonville, so when she would come to town, I would be playing, like, Beyonce for all the different stuff. And I'll be on this like on our little coffee table performing and dancing and all this stuff. And my and my sister's like, uh, uh, they're gonna go over and be a stripper. 
kind of right. But <laughs> but it's like I always knew I would do something like, you know, an entertainment, like Lord willing. I'd, I'd do something where people would see me and know me. So it, it just was kind of happen chance. I had... Because the thing is, the whole drag thing was never really a thing I thought about necessarily for me. I watched RuPaul Drag Race even, you know, as a kid when I was young coming up. Yeah. So it was not everything, anything I ever kind of saw for myself necessarily. So uh, I would got into a new job, and I didn't even know that the that the Treasure Coast or St. Louis County that we even have prides here, and I lived here most of my life. So it's one of the things where I guess you got to know somebody that knows somebody. Yeah. So I had moved a new job. They were like, okay, come to, okay, they, we were going to volunteer at Pride. It was Walgreens. Shout out to Walgreens. Um, we're going to, they're volunteering at Pride. And my, even my store manager, she was a whole lesbian and married. So it was like, okay, yeah. makes sense. So we had went to that Pride and then I had, uh, you know, saw the Queens. I saw the girls up there. It was, you know, the Kelly Randell, uh, Shalita and Dominique Taylor. So, you know, those are the girls. Cause I was mostly sitting outside, you know, passing out pamphlets and doing that whole sort of thing. So I didn't get yeah. to see much of the show. So before I left, I had seen Dominique. And it's funny because I think I had saw her the night before at Walmart. I was like, who in the world? She just had a lot going on. So I saw, which obviously I didn't know who she was, though, because, you know, yeah. I didn't know anything about the community. I didn't start getting into the round of community until I was like 21, 22. So uh, that's not like an app, <laughs> but yeah. in real life. So I had went, uh, we were going, it was so funny. So, cause me and my friend were, I was like, okay, I want to take a picture with her. Uh, I didn't get to take a picture with Dominique, but she gave me something actually a lot more valuable. She told me, hey, are you going to come to the after party? We were like, wait, where's the after party at? Tell us. So she was like, it's going to be down at the office in Fort St. Lucie. So I was like, okay, well, Dominique said that's the after party. I guess where we're going. So uh, there was an official after party. Me and my friend went by that when it was downtown and there really wasn't much going on. So we were like, okay, let's go to this one Dominique was talking about and see, you know, what the girls, gays and days have going on. So we went up over there and it was, it was everything. I was, I was shook. So I ended up, we were on a dance floor. It was like community, we had a thing. So I ended up meeting, he was attractive, but now that's like my good, so, you know, when someone's attractive, you know, but I was like, okay, so Cardi B's Bodak Yellow was playing. So we were all on a dance floor getting it, da, 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 da. So I ended up meeting uh, Raphael Jr., Vanessa Ray Peters, now if you want to know them, and uh, and Ronald and Peach. So like, you know, my friends and their friends, we all just became friends. So eventually I met uh, this young lady by the name of Ashley Peterson. This was all 2018, so literally five years ago. Um, and she, uh, cause Rafi was already a performer and all that. So he was already in the community and he'd invited me to something. So we went there and he was talking, to, he, he uh, Rafi was talking to someone, I guess, in a hopeful romantic kind of way. So Ashley, which is so funny, she's from Pennsylvania. She keeps it real. She's a chain smoker. I love her. So she took a long, <laughs> she took a long pull of her cigarette. She was like, uh, cause Rafi was like, I'm talking to, uh, John Doe about something and she took a long pull of her cigarette she said about what I was like I, I love her I'm like I I love her I was like you know I need to know her so got to run them so she was doing they were doing shows and stuff so yeah. I went to one show they had it was at the Copa Cat so everybody was outside and, everything. and you know I started going to the shows with my fans and you know doing you know this is you know do, doing all the things the things yeah. cutting up because I had never been around the community before so I started going to the shows uh to the their shows of support so somebody was outside I didn't know who this person was at the time they were like uh you should you should do drag I'm like really me why, why should I do drag it's like you already have the personality for it turns out that person that said that was citrus so uh, thank you citrus um I didn't even know if that was the time because mama wasn't in geesh. And it was like, okay, so then my friend, so I just was giving pillow talk like, oh yeah, sure, I'll do it, blah, 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 blah. Cut to my friends, Destiny and Sam, they had gotten me, and I have this bad thing when people send money on me, I feel like I gotta, you know, do things, so we're trying to work on that now. But so, so they had gotten me like a makeup, a, a makeup thing, which I still actually have to this day, uh, eyeshadow thing, a makeup up bag and lashes i was like oh gosh i really gotta do this now you know when you're just like saying stuff just you know talking yeah. Uh -huh, yeah sure i'll do it but i'm like dang they spent money now i really gotta figure out how in the world i'm gonna do this crap so uh <laughs> so we had the, we were trying to practice and figure out what to do so ashley had gotten me and like in the geesh for like the first time so i had it was kind of like at random they were starting to do shows at backroom tavern at the time which is where i even met you at yeah. um and so they started doing shows there so I started in March, it was a contest. And my first ever 
drag number was to dip it low by Christina Milian. So yeah, it was kind of like a at random sort of thing. It was like, okay, I kind of got pushed into doing it, but I'm happy I did it because you know, it all worked out in the end. But I will never forget when, even when I went to a meeting before I even started performing, I went to the meeting and Dominique had whispered to Ashley, she said, who's that girl? I was like, I'm like, oh. it's, uh, so it was like, oh wow. I'm like, I felt like, okay, I'm really here now. <laughs> right. So, yeah, speaking of that, so that was one of my questions was, what was it like for you? Well, no, I guess I'll ask that question later. So, like, obviously with me, I I didn't start doing drag in, like, gay bars. So I actually had, like, a different experience. Like, mm-hmm. I started doing drag at open mic nights because, like... Okay, you're an actual I'm, singer. Yeah. Well, to be well, to be fair, I will give you a little bit because I, I didn't get the history there because I wasn't I was yeah. young. There apparently was like a gay bar here that was thriving for like ten years prior to back from Tattletale. Right. Then there was one called Tattletale that I guess was there for a year or two that flopped. Apparently, the old owner was homophobic, so when the manager took over back from Tavern, when I started performing, it still had a sully name yeah. to it. So technically, we it was a straight bar, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. So when yeah when you when you perform at straight places, it's a whole different. Thing. But also, you're a real singer too, so you're not just over there, yeah. you know, lipping. You know, you have yeah, an actual but, talent. But thank you. Also, it was I didn't start here, so like I didn't think there was a drag scene here, so I didn't start doing drag till I moved mm-hmm. to Orlando. Orlando. Oh, of course, and they have like, a huge drag scene in gay scene. Yeah. yeah. But as I said, starting out very, of course, like Izzy wears like five times as much makeup as I do, but like I wore less than this. <laughs> Ah! And, and just like, some chapstick and mascara. Yes, almost. <laughs> almost. But what I will say, no. But what I want to give you your props on. Hold on one second. That yeah. you do have a signature look, and I do think that's so important Thank as you. a performer. Because even when I met you four years ago, you still pretty much look. You know, you have to. I think it's yeah. so important because performers and especially a lot of girls and gays these days, everyone wants to look like each other, but no one wants to spoken on having a signature look that. Hey, yeah. as soon as you see them, you know them. Or someone like if I if I'm like okay, I'm doing Prince Electro Diamond. I, if I have this and that on, they'll know. Oh yeah, yeah. that's you know. So I think yeah. it's important to have a signature look. I also kind of like that because like in the vein of like people who like yes, I could be one of the people who just did a signature hair color. My thing is that bores me. So it's like that's why I do all <laughs> all different sort of hair colors. That bores me. Well, that's it does. Fair. I mean, <laughs> Like that's fair, and also it's like I can't make up my mind. So it's like if I said I just want to be a blonde, it's like, well, what happens if I want to do like pink hair today? I can't because like I branded myself as a blonde, but like that's true. That's definitely very true. That's very true. It's always good. I think it's good as a performer to switch it up. It's good to have a signature look, but also be able to do multiple looks. So I think it's good to have like both, like. Like Madonna, she yeah. is like 60 years old, but she has like 60 different signature looks, you know? So, yeah. but she's always going to switch it. So I think it's important to be like, okay, I have my few signatures, but also I, it's it's important because after a while it can get stale. And there's a like, lot of people, you know. Yeah. And also I don't know how to do eyes because like, obviously if I'm covering up my eyes all the time, why bother learning? Like true that's true it's a process i i look makeup and hair and wig that stuff is not my ministry you know you have to do what you what you could do what works for you and also what you feel like fits your character fits your person your aesthetic so it's like you know and i feel hey you do what works for you that's your signature look and plus you're a real singer so it's like you know yeah yeah you kind of have something to fall back on right although i will say when she gets better salma said she actually wants to like do my makeup one time and i'm like well, you're good. Oh. I, would tr- I, I would trust you. She wants to do it for like a YouTube yeah. video. I'm like, I'm like, okay. That'll be something. And, yeah. and uh, I mean, I think because you've never had it done before, so it's you're open to it. Because with me, I'm just very. I think everyone's different, but like, I'm very secretive about like my makeup. So like, usually before I go to the show, I like to already have my makeup done. At least like the base of it done. I don't really like to let anyone else do. I'm open to it, but I just still am very like, you know, when it's like, cause yeah. I feel like it's still very me. So it's like, I, yeah, it's like, I know how I want me to look, you know, but at least you're open to it. And I think, yeah, Selma, she, she is like a fun girl and she's very supportive. So, Hey, let, let her put a little piece of eye on. You. Yeah. And like Selma is 
the reason why like I became like good friends with her is because like Salma's very real and like mm -hmm. I kind of am too. So it's like I don't mm -hmm. I'm not like a huge fan of like catty fake people. That's not me. Yes. Like, yes. And that's all the community is. So yes, yes. <laughs> But I definitely like Selma Love. I think her name, Selma Love, is definitely that. She is definitely very loving. She is definitely very, you know, supportive. I like, yeah, she, she's Selma Love. And the name yeah. definitely fits her. For sure. And definitely work. love Selma. So I do, I do. Okay, so I guess I'll ask this. So what was it like for you the first time you performed? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this story. Uh, okay, it, it was a mess. It, it just was a hot mess. I just, I have to be very honest. Um, so I had gotten my stuff like prepped and ready for doing the yeah. show. <laughs> oh boy. So I had never really talked about this before. So <laughs> my friend was supposed to do help me do my makeup. So she got caught up. So she was doing, uh, she was getting a new car at the time. So she was stuck up at the dealership knowing she was supposed to do more makeup. So, and, and, so, and all that other stuff. So that's what I, I almost was literally not going to perform it because I was like, oh my gosh, I was nervous. So I, after I got off work that day, I went uh, to Walmart. I got like a few like shooters of like, oh, let me watch my language. Not, not those kind of shooters. I yeah. got a few of like shot drinks. So I'm like, yeah. okay, calm the nerve down. I think it was some rum or some crap. And I don't even really drink. So it just was like something to calm the nerves. So I got a few of those. I was at my friend's house, which thankfully my friend Sam did have their own apartment. So it was like a safe space. So I didn't have to cross dress at home at first. So right. I was over there and I just, I, I was like having a mental breakdown. But then my friend whose uh, apartment it was, was like, hey, uh, have have you talked to so-and-so or where's the keys at for something? I'm like, look, I, I I have to get ready for this show right now. I don't know where our other friend is at. I'm trying to get ready. I'm about to have a mental breakdown. Like, like what, what do you, what more do you want from me? So <laughs> like they rushed over and it, it was, it was rough. Like I had a pair, pretty much I had a pair of like dental floss on what I was wearing really was, was like, think of like a pussycat doll circa 2005 meets a WWE diva circa 2005. Five, six. Like that's what the look was. Cause I was going to do dip it low. So I had just like a little, it, it just, it was all very little. Yeah. So, and then obviously I didn't really know much about tucking. So that, so I got there. The tuck really wasn't that great either. I had a robe on. I was going to take the robe off, but once got, you know, once free Willie was set loose, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to keep this robe on while I'm performing. And so it, it just, it was just all like a mess trying to do it. Just, it was not good, but I'm happy. It was a contest. I obviously lost, but it was a good learning lesson and experience. And from that day on, I was like, look, I need to learn how to do this stuff myself. Like hair, makeup, it, 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 just at least yeah. the basics, you know yourself. So that way, if something does fall through, I could just always be like, look, okay, I, I, if something messed up, I could blame myself. I don't have to blame anyone else. So it was kind of, I'm actually kind of happy that stuff didn't really work out with her doing it. Cause I'm like, okay, from that day, I was like, look, I'm about to be self-sufficient would do a trigger on my hair and makeup because you know everyone else's stuff going on and the thing is what's the most important thing to you may not be the most important thing to someone else so right. especially when it's pertaining to you so i was like okay i'm gonna do my own but that it, it was mess but uh, the, I, I you get better it gets better kids okay yeah well first of all you said you lost you're talking to somebody who's never won anything like in terms of like <laughs> doing drag i never <laughs> And and, I mean, and there's nothing wrong. And sometimes it's not about winning, really. No, it is, but it's not. No, because sometimes the experience is important. Yeah. As I um, what was it? The last time I competed was like, I told my best friend Sean, who was there, who's like, he he was like, I'm like, look, I don't need somebody to tell me I'm talented to know, or like, I don't need somebody to like tell me I'm like amazing and win to know that I'm talented. I know I am. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. They're not. They don't validate your. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like plus when I performed. So in truth, I will say this: Izzy seen me one of the like very few times I've actually performed in this area because I don't perform that yes. often. I, <laughs> so I like, remember. Yes, I still remember. Yes, yes. yes. You just like but, let it all out when you perform. You just like put it all out there. Yeah, you, like you don't hold back, which is great. And it's like partially when I tell people now, like when they talk about like 
performing. I'm like, look, I'm busy. Like, I do this. Like, <laughs> that's funny. Like, Mama, she's booked and busy at the moment. You know, she has things you know. going on. And it's like, even I mean, that's if, fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's like even though, like, granted, would I like to be doing this where I had like four guests in a row, like during the? Actually, you know what? That sounds like too much work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not yet not yet slow and no. steady slow and steady no that's why like i try and do like if i can get two interviews in a week i'm grateful for it right so far during pride it's been harder like oh yeah because uh, everyone's like booked or something yeah that's yeah that yeah that was the kind of the issue that i was gonna run into but i was like look i need to make sure i see you before pride because i like I was going to be kind of sort of free, but as I was getting closer to Pride, things kind of kept coming up and opportunities. And look, yeah. you know, as a performer, when an opportunity comes up, take it. So yeah. you never, never know when you get it again. But I said, look, I need to make sure I have a sit down with you before Pride is over. And yeah, we have our Kiki. So yeah, I definitely had to make sure I yeah had to because yeah, Pride, it's yeah. Yeah, it's like, I, I honestly, like at first I thought I'm like, well, maybe I should take off the month of June. But it's like, no, I'm like, especially yeah. like, no, like literally, definitely like, don't. like literally, my my birthday is this month. Like literally, my birthday is next oh. Wednesday. So it's like, oh, so it's wow. like, wait, are you a cancer? Yes, I'm a cancer. Yeah. Ugh, the emotions of it all. But I, I get along well with cancers. I like cancers. Yeah. I like cancers. Well, yeah, I get along. Yeah, usually, like the sign I know I definitely get along with is Pisces, but that's also because they're like water signs. So like, yes. Mm, nah, I, I can take them or leave them. Especially the men. They're like the worst, but usually the girls I like. <laughs> hey, just, just saying. Just saying. Anyway, oh, so in, okay, now I gotta just get into like the first time I performed. So like I had been at that bar before I was Prince Electro Diamond and then like mm -hmm. one week I just said like Somebody's like, they loved how I get into it. I'm like, you know what? I had a vision of like what I wanted to wear. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. I might as well do it. Like, <laughs> I may as well. Yeah. And I mean, like, that was the start of me doing it for months at mm. this one place. I eventually, like, at one point when I was in Orlando, I was doing two shows in one night. And I'm like, oh, wow. I did it for like five months. And I'm like, this is getting to be a little bit too much, so I had to like drop that place, right. and then I ended up moving to like the queer <laughs> so I place. Like, I had to like drop that place. Like, mm, you're well, not working for Beanie Lot. No, I just I couldn't. It's like, it's like I would get out. I would start going out at like, I'd have to leave my house at like seven thirty at night, and I wouldn't get home till like midnight. Like, oh, or like twelve thirty. Oh, yeah, no. It's oh like, no, no, that's not gonna work. No. Okay, so understandable why you're like, no, yeah, yeah I don't blame you. I don't blame you, no. Mm -hmm. And the place I performed at in Orlando, rest in peace, Parliament House. Like, oh, yeah, yes, oh, at least you were able to get to say that you performed there. Yeah, I mean, like, that was that was honestly like when I lived in Orlando, that was the only like gay place I went to, like, the whole time I was there, like, right. Of course, of course. But I think yeah, it's 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 so important, like those like LGBT like cornerstones, especially in Florida. Like I remember right before Rona came and I was about to get into like my year of doing drag, I was like, I need to kind of travel some more. So that's why I started doing Melbourne. I was able to go to West Palm Beach and do the roosters one time there. They had the contest. And of course, yeah. you know, I stormed the girls and I won a hundred dollars. Yeah. But Unfortunately, you know, they, you know, the thing it had burned down, and you know, they they let the insurance lapse because yeah. he was trying to pay the. Unfortunately, but yeah, yeah it, it's it's yeah, it sucks that a lot of the, you know, historic LGBT places in Florida are some of them are no more. Yeah. I know. Again, rest in peace, roosters. I've also performed. I performed there many times too. So it's like yes, yes, it's sad. It is sad. Yeah. It, it sucks. It sucks. And then, like, when I was down south, the thing is like. I performed a lot in like the West Palm Beach Lake Worth area at one point, and then mm. like eventually, eventually I'm like, especially like after COVID, I did like probably like a few months, and I'm like, it is too much for me to like be driving down in one night during the middle of the week, and then like having to come <gasps> back up and like, fair, be to work, cause, fair. be to work, because like I I used to work actually, 
I used to work super early. I kind of... Mm. Actually, I can't even mention that. I told Izzy I was training on my new job. I don't know my schedule yet. I know, like, what I'm doing the next mm. two weeks. But, like, other than that, though, like... So, like, we'll it's, give yeah. you your schedule at some point. I'm like, well, that's It's great. a crapshoot. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. It's like, it's, it's a crapshoot as far as that is, yes. It, it is mornings, because, like, I am someone I will not work nights. Like... Really? I and the thing is, I'm not. A, it depends. I guess your schedule because I'm more of like a evening night type of girl. Mornings are not. I'm not functioning before 10 a.m. I'm sorry. That's just not. You know, unless I unless I absolutely have to, but preferably no. Yeah, but that's just me though. Totally. Oh, and speaking yeah. of mornings, before let's see, because I know you. I know you. You have. You have. You have to move on. Uh, yeah. Also, I was able to do because I don't know how I could forget about this. The drag queen march that was uh, April twenty second, historic, iconic. I was happy I was able to go. I almost wasn't gonna go though because talk about mornings. Oh yeah. my gosh, we had to meet at like at uh, Dominic shop on the bus. I think by like six, six or six thirty. Yeah. And also we had to. Well, we didn't have to be in drag. I mean, you could be in drag. You can't already want to do half drag or whatever. But you know, I'm yeah. from on Wamana, so I came prepared. So I, you know, right. I, had to, I, I was, I was together. So I had, I got up at like three o'clock. I was like, oh my god, I don't want to do this, but I need to. Yeah. And we had went, we went up there with the Melbourne crew. Thankfully, it was so awesome. It was so historic. I, I don't know if it was the hormones or what, but literally, days a day or two later, all I could do was just cry. It was so beautiful because it was yeah. like looking around and seeing people that don't look like you, but look like you, literally. Yeah. You know, you know, you're just like, where it's like, wow, we live nothing alike, but I feel like it's around family. So I think it's, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like, if you really have to do something, it's like, okay, I'm going to push through. I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to push it. I just want to throw in the direct queen march there while we were on it, but go ahead, go ahead. See, I mean, that was so great. I probably would have joined y'all, but the thing was, I was supposed to do an interview that day. Oh, uh, you. Yeah, person that, person that ended up ghosting me, but like, oh no, mm, no names, no names. Tell me, tell me afterwards. But I, I don't. Care. But I'll, I'll tell you on the stream. I don't fucking care. <laughs> oh, okay. Who was it? Please air them out. Raya Latrey. <gasps> oh, really? Mm -hmm. I'm shook. It. Wow. And she's supposed to be a professional girl and all everyone talks so highly about her. Really? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I thought it would be one of the local girls, not not a professional working Cali girl. Oh wow. Mm. Mm. No wonder why she hasn't been on drag race. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> let me not. Let me not. I don't know. She seems like a nice lady. Let me just leave it alone. But that's interesting. That's very interesting. And I well, hey. and I never found what? out why. I may so I always, for certain people, like she's famous. So I'll probably, I'll probably like give her a second chance. Maybe ask her in like a few months. Like she's, you said she's famous. <laughs> she... <laughs> okay, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I thought, I thought, I thought I hurt my feed wrong. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So you may well, give her a second like... chance. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, Izzy was talking about me being shady, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, she I, she's more known than me and you, and also she's a drag race yeah. adjacent. But yeah. ma'am, that that still is. There are rude girls that are still a lot more, and a lot more famous queens that are still a little more prompt and on top of things. So to yeah. be fair, I'm know, I'm not saying that. I, look, I'm yeah, I'm not saying that I wouldn't do rude girl, but honestly, I'm smaller. I can't touch a rude girl with a ten foot. Of course, like. Like, oh, I, not I, 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 I wish, I wish I'm trying. There, I, you know, I always, you know, go ahead. There's like a cap now that I'm at where, like, if you're above this point, I can't get to you. Um, it's about a hundred thousand. It's like I can't do more than that. Like, fair, maybe, that's fair, and even that's rare because I have people like 50 and 60k where it's like, it's like. I sometimes found that, like, if you do stuff publicly, you can get, like, people to reply. So, yes. you, like, write in the comments, like, I'm trying to get in contact with you. All of a sudden, like, not all the time, but with some of them, they'd be like, a yeah. couple hours later. Yeah. 
It, it can. Well, and speaking of Rugos, it uh, you, you know what? Ooh, I'm about to spill a little bit of tea now on this thing. Okay. So um, okay, so we had our pride here. It was uh in April. So we had our pride, and it was the special guest was gonna be Detox off of Drag Race you know, season five and also mm-hmm. All Stars 2, which, I, look, I love these. Like, that was, I watched Drag Race before yeah. that, but the season five girls have a special place in my heart because me and my mom watched the first season live together. So we love the season five girls. Yeah. So mind you, you would think as performers that we either get to see the show for free or at least we would get a discounted rate to, you know, see the show with detox in it. Because, you know, we performed, she performed the after party, let me be clear. Yeah. Uh, and, for, and for our Treasure Coast one, so she performed the after party, which is fine. And her writer said, uh, she didn't want to perform with no local girls, but that's another story. Anyhow, so, <laughs> so, um, I, but I love detox. So we, so I was like, okay, I'm like, I would love to, you know, see this stuff, but it was for the tickets. I'm like, we performed here, you know, great, but dang, we don't get to see the show. We have to pay a full price for a ticket to see it. I was like, oh, uh-huh, okay, I guess I won't see her, unfortunately. At least, like I said, I was in the same vicinity as detox. So... <laughs> Cut to, cut to like a week or two later, going to the thing, you know, all, a lot of the Rue Girls are there. So it was like Roxy Andrews, yeah. it was Silky Nutmeg Ganache, Detox, Latrice Royale, like all the girls are there. So I, when we were uh, after storming the Capitol, we were coming down and I saw Detox, mind you, she was, you know, wasn't in Geisha or anything, but I was, Detox has a, yeah, iconic look even out of it. So I just said like, it wasn't, I wasn't going crazy fangirl because after being a performer, I'm a fan of the girls, but it's a little different. Yeah. So she's like, oh, detox. And she was, and she came up to me and she had just hugged me. I said, thank you for coming. She said, no problem. And she was so, so I'm like, wow. All I just said was detox. I didn't say, oh my God. I just said, you know, above a whisper, but not yeah. yelling detox. And she came and hugged. So that part was cool. Um, it is funny because Silky, did you watch Silky season? Yeah. Okay, well, you know what Silky gives. So when we were starting the march, Silky was there. So she somehow we ended up in the same area. So you know what Silky gives when she's always likes to be loud, large, and in charge, and all the other fun stuff. So when we were starting, she was marching. When I say this, you say that. When I say Ron, you say the like. You know, she was doing all yeah. that. I said, "Hold on, Silky. Look, this is an Ariel Versace and the girls." And then, <laughs> and then she came up to she she laughed. She came she came up to she said, "Yeah," because she put her hand around my. I wish someone caught that on video too. She was yeah. like, you know, because you know I'd be getting the girls together. So I laughed. And it's funny because I actually wasn't a fan of Silky on her season. So I'm not going to be fake and be all like, Silky, I love, you know, if I don't really, you know, nothing yeah. against her. But after that day, I had a whole new respect for her. And I saw her later on that day. And she was like, oh, I like what you had said earlier. So I was like, you know what, Silky, she, she's good people. You know, and I, I don't like when people like don't like someone on TV or on line or something. They see them in person. They're like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's like, look, if you don't really don't like them, don't be fake. And it was just a genuine life. But OK, she was cool. I wasn't fangirling. But I'm like, you yeah. know, she came. She showed me love. I showed her love. So, yeah, I think some of the rude girls could be laid back. Other ones, you know, but yeah. it depends. Well, first of all, to your point of detox performing in this area, I'm like, who did she lose a bet to? Like, that, <laughs> well, actually, that was my honest. <laughs> to be fair, actually, you know, she was out and like she's an Orlando girl, like rock stuff. So you know, she was yeah. obviously look that they had they had to cough up a big bag to get her now. So the 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 treasure coast section they yeah. had to. The, the pride lines that they they yeah it wasn't cheap okay so the, yeah. yeah the the, the check cleared the cash app went through but uh and she did the after party so it was just a cute little one too but yeah she yes yes and also she's like a florida girl too also i think she was gonna be in the area too because she was gonna come to the march so yeah she's yeah. a florida girl so yeah yeah i think yeah, yeah. so that, that was cool that was cool so at least i got to see her for free so that worked out yeah i mean some of the rude girls I have met, I have met three Rue girls. I met, um, oh, I've, I've met Adore, who's like, oh, okay, I love Adore. She's the Libra super, party. We love Adore. Mm-hmm. Super sweet. I met Mon, I met Monet and like okay. Ginger in the same night. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. That's cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, Ginger's a Florida girl too. She's from yeah. Locks Ahead, some some weird country place. But yeah, Locks. No, she's from Crab. She- Everness. She's from some weird place in Florida. She's from Florida, but some weird place. No, she's from she's from Leesburg. It came to me. Oh, okay, there. Okay, yeah. there. I knew it was some place with an L that was like small in the country. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, no, it was it was yeah. So that's how how were they? Besides the um, door, I know you said it was great. Adora was great. Monet. Well, the thing was when I met Monet, I wasn't as big of a fan of Monet as I am now. Like mm-hmm. during, during during season ten, I wasn't like. Mm-hmm. 
a huge fan of hers, but like after All Stars Four, I'm like, I'm like, yes, this bitch sings like work. Because I right, love, right. I love, I love musicians. Obviously, being one. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. So no, I see. Yeah, yeah. You have you gain a whole new respect later on. Definitely. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just being honest. Yeah. And then like Ginger, the one thing that I was surprised about because like I, you don't think about this, but like she saw me like I, I went VIP, so like I saw her and she's like, oh. You posted about this on Instagram. I'm like, Ginger actually saw what I posted? Like, What? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's cool, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. I think the Florida girls are just a little different. They're just both a little differently, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I mean, even though Adora's from California, so she doesn't count. Yeah. But, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I always like the, because that's like the home team. So it's always good to see. You know, even though, you know, you're not originally from Florida, but it's always good to yeah. see the Florida girls win, you know? Right. So, when did you join the Peterson house? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, in 2019, so when I first started. So, I'm, I'm, cause I usually like to go by Izzy just because I'm a one name type of girl. Like, that's all it is. Because the oh. thing is, the whole drag last name, me, and the, a lot of like the younger girls even talk about citrus. Like, we always say it's like more old school. Like, you, like, the name has to be. Sh 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 Shatangela, uh Brooks Peterson Esquibet. Like, you know, like the whole yeah. drag patch, which I love. I have respect for that, but I'm like, it's just not, you know, that's it's not necessarily necessary. But 2019, I had met her in 2018, and then I started cross-dressing in possibly 2019. Yeah. Well, I mean, and when you have the house name, sometimes <laughs> you have to di you have to distance yourself from your drag mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I know yes and no because the thing is I, the thing is I love Ashley. It's not just even about the drag stuff because like you know that yeah. stuff is whatever. It's like who cares about you taught me how to put on a pair of lashes. I'm more about the person. I think as a person, that's more of what I connect with. Like the drag stuff is great, but I think as a person, that's why I like love her. She's very helpful. She's Really, yeah, she and she's just funny. She just keeps it real. So that's why I think I always connect with her outside of the drag stuff. I mean, that stuff is cool, but, you know, it's bigger to me than, bigger to, you know, me than that with her. Like, the drag stuff is cool, but her as a person means a lot more to me than that. You yeah. Know? And plus, I'm grateful that I'm not part of a um drag house because, like, first of all, my stage name is already long enough as it is. Yeah, so I want to add, sure. add, like, another name on top of that. Like, Oh boy! Be, oh brother! No, no, <laughs> no. I, I, I think, I think, I think where you're at is fine. <laughs> yeah, and it's also like I've argued, as I did, like Izzy was talking about my interview with Selma earlier. As I've said in the interview, it's like, what's a drag mom gonna teach me? Because it's like, yeah, y'all are y'all are in one lane. I'm in my own lane doing what yeah, that I want to do. Yeah, that is true. No, that's true. No, that's definitely true. And also, I think with the house stuff, it unfortunately adds like a lot more division into the community, which we shouldn't have. But, you know, it's there. So I think it's unfortunate, though. But that's why it's like me and a lot of like the young girls coming up, we made the we have the understanding to be like, look, we're just going to support each other. We're not going to shade each other. Because I think yeah. that that's another issue, too, because I never talked about this, too. But I mean, girl, we got the clocks and tea. There was the legendary, who I definitely have a lot of respect for, Kelly Randell. When I first started, um, there was problems because like she would have shows and stuff, and she's like, "Okay, you don't don't have Ashley them because like she's gonna bring those amateurs with." And it was like amateurs, amateurs, amateurs. It was just like we kept being boxed. And the thing is, everyone has to start somewhere. So if you don't give us an opportunity to grow or don't try, you know, get, not saying you have to help anyone. Look, no one ha yeah. gets any handouts in this world, but give them an opportunity to at least show what they can do or teach them something, th then yes, everyone has to be amateurs at one point. So it's unfortunate that it was so much division when I first started and it was like everyone arguing about, okay, am I am I a Peterson, am I a Taylor? Oh, I should have been, a I should have been, you know, it was like that whole thing. Yeah. And apparently one time Ashley and uh, Dominic were on the phone saying, I'm not scared of you. Well, I'm not scared of you. And uh, I, it's, it's gonna be in this, it's, it was like, I'm like, oh, which I felt, I felt nice. Like, oh, the girls are arguing over me, yes. But yeah. like the division stuff, I don't really like or care for and it's so that while she was here that that you know it was some of that 
and I think, you know, now that she has passed on, it, some of that has lessened. Some of it, some of it. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I, I don't, I don't get why being in a community we have to be so divided because it, it's like there's enough division out there outside of the community. So why divide each other in it? But you know, this the crabs in a bucket in a barrel mentality. You know, they we kill our own. But it's also like, first of all, I would say to you, mm -hmm. I would get why they would argue over you because, like, this is where I'm going to oh, be. Tell a me bit, more. This is where okay. I'm going to be. This is where I'm going to be a little bit shady. But like, mm -hmm. out of the, at least the show I remember seeing of the Peterson House, other than you, or like other than Ashley, you were like the most talented person, like. That I saw there. I <laughs> I think look, I think everyone that does all the shows are all very I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, I think everyone that does the shows see look. Cause you you're over there, you're safe out in in, in <laughs> And wait, what is that? Wait, what? Uh, Martin County. I'm in the St. Lucie. So look, I'm yeah. not trying to get jumped by the girls, but uh, I appreciate that. I think yeah. um, what, so what I think what I like to do with it that sets me apart, I think is more as personality. I'm not saying I'm the best makeup artist, the best hairstylist, the best outfit designer, but I think personality and I think that's what sets me apart. Everyone has to focus on what sets them apart. Instead of trying to compete with each other about, okay, well, I have the better side of it. Like, look, what about, what about you that makes you different? So that's where I always try to. So I'm I'm surprised you even right. still remember for something that long ago, but that just shows that hey, it was memorable, and that's what yeah. also as a performer, no matter what kind of performer you are, you want to create memories and moments. So, right, thank you for that. You're welcome. So I guess that's important. Definitely. So, what? Where am I? Oh, what is the craziest outfit or like prop that you've designed? Ooh. I can't necessarily say that I had designed. Oh, outfit or prop? Oh gosh, that's a tricky one. That is a tricky one. Usually, I don't necessarily have too many more with props. I've done chairs. I've done. Oh well, okay. Well, it's not necessarily crazy, but I have what I when I've done Rihanna S and M. I brought out, and it's funny because I was, one, for one of the numbers, I actually straddled my barber, so that was a fun time. But uh, oh. I had, because <laughs> it was it was s &M, so I had yeah. like, uh, he had his arms out of set, and I was like whipping him with, you know, like one of those like horse whips. So, you know, like one of those, yeah. like, like the, like the paddle things. And he said, I really was hurting him. Mind you, he's like a six foot two Viking. So I was like, really? I didn't realize I was yeah. hurting him. But I would say probably that when I do s and because I have like that, the little horse whip thingy, even jigger. So I would say that's probably one of the crazier ones. Cause I've done like whipped cream and that sort of stuff, but I would say yeah. the, the, the little horse whip, you know, to get the boys into shape. Mm. I would say that. <laughs> that that's always, yeah, that's always a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I can't answer this question cause I don't design anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's understandable. yeah, I buy my shit. Like, I do too. I, now I will like I will rhinestone something or hot glue a piece, but yeah, no. yeah, exactly. I'm the it's same like, way. I, I I will gay out. Yeah, you stone something. Technically, you changed it so you can kind of call true. It your own. That's true. It, it wasn't like that when I purchased it. So yeah, I'm taking yeah. ownership of it. Okay. <laughs> so, do you ever have aspirations of? leaving this area to like somewhere more populated so you can get more opportunities Oof. oh boy well the thing is when i that's an interesting question the thing is i was always like when i was younger even probably still now it was always like california dream and i always thought that's why when i was even in las vegas i was happy because i'm like okay you know west coast the best coast it's just a different vibe so hopefully yeah. one day when i retire with a bunch of money i will be somewhere in the west coast but um me and my family there is some talks about moving more towards like central florida area eventually so that would you know and i think you know that area definitely is uh, as a thriving alphabet scene and also drag scene as well so because i think when it's like when you're in florida it's either either going further down south or you're going like central florida as far as like the drag area is concerned yeah. you know it's like the orlando air like miami sort of because that's like the most popping yeah. area so as far as a performer because i think here 
the scene is tricky because also there's like the old guard that's there, which is fine, but also it's hard to kind of get the shows because this is something I definitely do want to talk about too. We have an issue with, in this area specifically, having shows and it's like we're not being respected by by the bar owners or, or by the patrons. And it's like we're there because we're more of like a spectacle or we're trying or we're doing the shows and like we're not getting paid or you got to fight to get paid or like stuff or they're not promoting us properly. And the thing is, I think we have to, especially as a community, if you keep putting yourself on the clearance rack, no one's going to want to pay full price for you. Right. OK. Listen to this again. If we keep putting ourselves on the clearance rack, no one is ever going to want to pay full price for you. Okay? So, as a community, we have to stop doing that because local DJs, they go places, they get paid. Dance artists and dance groups, they get paid. They all, you know, local singers, rappers, they go places, they get paid. Why can't we, after literally, when we put no, nothing against them, but we, you know, all the stuff we have to buy with the costumes, hair, makeup, all the stuff we have to put into it. And right. we should just be happy to perform place just because we get a place to perform. Like, I, I, I'm not like that because I'm one of the girls where I'll go sometimes months without performing either because I don't feel like it. Or it's just like, if there is not some sort of financial thing that I can get from it or an opportunity, because it's not every always, always just about money. Sometimes you got to think yeah. about something being an opportunity because sometimes there's things where, OK, I'm not necessarily going to get paid for this. It's going to be opportunity. So I'll, you know. <laughs> but I think that in this community, we have an issue with doing that. And I'm just like, I'm not just that thirsty hunger to perform where I'm just going to put keep just putting myself out there for free so they can sit there and, oh, look, <laughs> I'm going to laugh at you and record you while I'm not going to tip you and you're not going to get paid for me. It's like, no, and the people don't respect. I'm like, no, I'm not. I, I just think too highly of myself and too highly of what I do to sell myself shorter. So I definitely think in the, in other places, you know, that do have performers and drag and that sort of stuff. They definitely, they, they the girls go to the show, they get paid. There's no issues with that. They don't have to do it for free or we're having to try and pay ourselves or split or split 44 to third. I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So I'm definitely, you know, it's, it's, I, I hate to say it like that, but girl, if there is not a check involved, then I need to be sitting at home. Cause I could just sit at home and look cute. Or I could just go out and get cute. I don't need to go perform and be cute for free. Like that, you know, I, for what? Uh, I, 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 huh? I get I get where you're coming from. It's like I guess in some ways I've gotten so used to it because like I perform mm -hmm. for free a lot. Like, but right. it's all right. and I have too. I'm not gonna say like I have. Yeah. Hey, I have as well. Trust me. And and, and look, and that's why I said I don't want to misconstrue. Yeah. If there is an opportunity. And sometimes the opportunity, it doesn't necessarily have to be money. It's like, okay, it's opportunity because more people are going to see that there's going to be more eyes are going to be exposed. There's nothing wrong with that. A case in point, I was at the June 1st show in Melbourne at uh, the Twister, the Twister Cock, as Dominic calls it, Twister Rooster. And yeah. um, I didn't win the night, but I was one of the owner's picks. Me and this other girl, one of the owner's picks, to do like a walk-off. So we did a walk-off. He liked both of us. We had to pick a night which we were going to come back. It was a Thursday. So Friday or Saturday were the nights we had to choose between. I couldn't do any of those weeks because mama was already, you know, I have a job. I was booked. So I yeah. was like, I'll come back next week. Next week, guess who I got to be in a show with? And even though it was just a tip through number, I got to be in a show at Marcy Mogul. So I'm saying like, hey, I didn't, yeah. I didn't win that night. The, the $100 win would have been nice, but I didn't win $100, but I got to be in a show at Marcy Mogul and got to be seen by more people the next. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not yeah. saying it's always about the money because that, that's not it either. No, but no, but finish your thought about you saying you, you, you perform for free. And it's honestly, like, as I said, Izzy seen me perform. That was mm -hmm. years. That was years in the making. Cause like, right. But when, when you're having to perform at open mic nights, where like your every act after you is acoustic music, acoustic, like mm -hmm. guitar sets. And you're performing uh -huh. ele electronic music that you wrote, that you like beat you made yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to like, you almost have to like try and get them on your side. So like you know right. how to, that's I know fair. how to work, and that's like, yeah, that's fair. It's like even no, that's though fair. it's like you learn how to work a room. It's like why? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's definitely no. It's definitely not all about money, and sometimes it's about opportunities. That I'm like, I'm not saying I'm opposed. Yeah. There are things where, hey, I perform free. It's like, oh, it's for a benefit. It's for something that's fine. But if it's local things that I, that's being done weekly, as that I'm coming to to perform at, 
Yeah. I, I, I need a check. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to just, I can sit at home like this and just be cute and have people tell me I'm cute and just get like, you see, yeah. I can, I can do that fine at home. Yeah. Why g- prepare a number and buy things for that for nothing? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, right. I'm sorry. I'm not, I, I love performing, but look, the rent and bills are due and they are not sit, ha- handing out these sickening wigs for free, unfortunately. No. So, you know, it, it, it like like Anna Nicole Smith said, it costs a lot of money to be me. It's expensive to be me. Yeah. So, you know, it helps. It helps. But I think, yeah, there's definitely, you have to see what's opportunity birth with what's not. Yeah. And as Izzy said, Izzy's got the good hair. Hence why it's not, <laughs> hence why it's not cheap. I have the cheap hair here because... <laughs> hey, look! It's a part of your branding, your aesthetic, yeah. and I do like the color. Yeah, I, I, look, we're we're kind of in the same color family right yeah. now. So yes, and it's like the truth of why. What was it? Somebody was asking me like, why don't I just go into a wig shop and like buy wigs? I'm like, I've tried that before. I got a huge ass head. They don't have wigs that fit me in a wig shop. So like, that's why I order shit online. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah. That that's true. Same thing with like some wigs, even some shoes for me. Yeah, when you go to the regular shops, they either don't have your size or the stuff they do have in their size that fits you is like not that great. So yeah, you have to do online shopping or sourcing at like other places yeah. or thrift shop. You know, yeah, you have to kind of be more a little more resourceful. You end up buying those court reporter wigs that look like Monet Exchange, but like. <laughs> Hey, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. They, they come in handy sometimes. Look, it's like, look, I got my Katie Keurig hair on for the day. <laughs> you know, you know, they come in handy. They have a place. <laughs> I got a few of those stashed away too. Look, you know. <laughs> but, but like, but like, you're kind of like skinnier. You ain't like big like Monet and Monet and I are. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'm fair. I mean, fair. No lies were told. That's very yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. No, that is true. Yeah, yeah. When sometimes when you are of a certain, you know, size, things like if you are a bit thicker, you need like a big purse because you would look crazy when you're like a little teeny yeah. tiny. You know, when you it's about proportionizing, and that's all things. Even when you're smaller, there's some things that I have insecurities for that I'm like, okay, I need to always, you know, you know how to conceal things. I think it's important to know, you know, your body and what works for you. But I will say, when I go on your Instagram, you have all the body out out. So clearly, you are not ashamed of the skin you were born in, which I think is lovely. Thank you. That's. I have a question about that later on. That did take a little bit of going okay. through, but we'll get there. So, okay. so okay. would you would you ever consider auditioning for RuPaul's Drag Race? I mean, yes and no. The thing is, because I I would have to get some sewing lessons or something something in, because they ain't yeah. about to go in there and clown me like they do all those other girls that don't know. I, like you know, it will be. I don't want to just be there for an episode or two, and it's like, okay, what's that? You know. It's like, if you do it, you want to make sure that you do it right. But I think, hey, in due time, and you know, hey, you never know. What do you mean, Izzy? You don't want to go on there and look like Hasha Davis? (laughs) As much as I would love to. As much as I would love to. I was a lovely... 13th alternate uh yeah no i yeah preferably not and see that there there goes the shade those cancers are very shady don't, don't let the smile <laughs> fool you people those cancers they will get you right but i mean come on she's like she's like i don't i don't, I don't know how to sew and that's why i look awful i'm like you look like you threw every fucking thing in the room on that outfit. That's why you now look see, horrible. see now. I know you know your drag history. Your girl, our girl, our girl, uh, Adore did that same thing. Also, that was season six, and she had the personality to get away with it. And she was already—they you know. already saw her making it far, so she kind of pulled it off. But I think you know. yes. Hey, where we're at now, <laughs> you can't get on the show and be like, okay, I didn't, you know, it's like, come on now. So if you're gonna, if I like do, if I'm gonna do something, I need I like to come correct and be proper. So it needs to be right. You know, yeah. I don't want to do something and just be like, okay, I flopped. Like, I want to at least try to be like, look, I know I did, I did my personal best. You know. See, I now think I haven't said this before on here, so I'll say it now. I don't think I'd do Drag Race. I might do Queen of the Universe, like that. Ooh, I think I could see that for you. Yes, I could definitely see that for you. That yeah. would make sense. I, I could see that. Yeah, because like, thing is, like. Drag is a talent and it's entertaining, yeah. but I think when queens actually sing, that puts them in a whole different sphere. So yeah. I think, yeah, I definitely I could see that. I could see that. 
it would make I, sense. Although I do wear body suits, so like, I know Michelle would say, "Well, actually, no. Here's what I would do. I'd be, I would wear a green body suit, and mm. I'd be, and when, when Michelle's got to say something, I'll be like, "What you got to say, Michelle? Go ahead." Yeah, yeah, it's like, look, I already know you're gonna read me, so I, it's like, look, I, I'm prepared. At least you're ready to be read, so that's good. It's like, you know what? I know you're gonna read me. It's fine. I, 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 I can take it on the chin. Because she did that episode one of this season, and she's like, mm. no, I don't, as anyone who's seen Drag Race knows, I don't like a bodysuit. I'm like, well, why you got to like everything? <laughs> I know, I know. A, like, a, exactly. It's like, <laughs> ma'am, I know you've traveled everywhere, but you know, every queen has a little piece of bodysuit somewhere in the back. You know, look, I, I, even Mama Rue does. It's just, it's kind of yeah. hard to not... Hello. It's, it's now it, now judge it if it's like a good, nice fitting bodysuit. You know. Yeah. Okay, it's a bodysuit, but does it fit good? Does it look good? How's the color? You know. So I don't just judge them for having on a bodysuit. Unless unless you want to pay for me to have something else on, Michelle. Please. <laughs> and it's like the other thing I do is like a t shirt dress, but I also probably get red for that too, because it's like Oh yeah, because yeah, because you know that they let a door have it and stuff, especially if it's about t shirt dresses and the whole yeah, I so yeah. That that's true. That is true. But I mean, if that's your drag and your aesthetic, yeah. look, I mean, you want to be true to that. I think that's where a lot of queens or people just in general performers, whether you're on TV, not wherever you're at, get yeah. messed up at because they take the critiques. Like I know when I first started, the critique was about some things about my makeup or about uh, different like things. And I'm like, OK, how can I take this and also make it me? Because I don't want to look like someone else or want to take, you know, it's like taking critiques yeah. and making it work for you. Because at the end of the day, it's about how you see yourself, not how other people see you. So right. that's important. So now to this question. Have you ever suffered with body insecurities? Ooh, yes. Mostly because I have like a short torso, which kind of sort of works for drag. But in life, it's like I had like I have like long arms and then like a short torso. So like standing up, my my fingertips reached my like my kneecap so it's just like awkward stuff like that my arm so that's like there's like little stuff that i did especially and the thing is especially with starting drag i was like i see why women have all these body issues because of like the sizing and all the like the stuff is kind of crazy when you think about yeah. it when it comes a lot of how like the sizing is done and like the metrics and the you know so there was some things i definitely did but it's like learning how to conceal and it's like you know what i'm happy with how i am i remember when i was younger on one of the apps this one boy told me and I'll, I'll never forget it. He was like, he said, I had a wide stomach. I was like, wow. I, I, I laughed. I laughed. But it was, I'm like, wow. I was like, wow, a wide stomach. I didn't realize it was wide. But, you know, stuff happens. Kids say yeah. things. I'm, I'm always going to remember that. But I'm like, you know what? I love me. And look, the men and boys love my wide stomach now. So it's fine. But it's, it's learning how, like, okay. Yeah. Everyone has, like, imperfections and body things. It's just learning, like, how to conceal it and how to be like look this is me take it or leave it you know right i mean like to the point you said i have body out now it took me getting out of like the unrealistic weight that i thought i should weigh which was i said i should weigh 150 pounds 150 oh, wow. 60 pounds I have you're a tall pounds. girl too yeah i am six foot three there's no way oh, that yeah, you no. weigh 150 oh, oh, 160 no. pounds would be at no. all healthy. No, no, that's like malnourished. Yeah, no, that's way too. Yeah, no, no, that that's yeah. Th then we really do have a problem there. Yeah, no, no. Well, I'm happy you realize that that was yeah. not going to make sense. Yeah, that that's that's dangerous. And I think it's like it's all about like what you intake because I think uh, when you take in, <laughs> excuse me, like sometimes other people, other people's insecurity and their other things. Sometimes it's projecting. So it's like yeah. how they see themselves. And the things that they're not happy about, they'll put on to you. It's like, no, I'm not your therapist. Don't visit your issues onto me. This is stuff that you have issues with on yourself. I don't have an issue with it. You have this complex. So, yeah, yeah I, that, that's not cool. That's really not cool. Totally. So, what was your dating life like before and after doing, like, starting drag? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that is funny. Wow. <laughs> Wow, it's. <laughs> I mean, it was it was tragic before. It's even worse now. Um, <laughs> oh God, I don't even know where to start. Okay, so really, oddly enough, this is some other tea. I am twenty 
six years old and I have never been in a relationship, believe it or not, at all. So, um, it's I'm not, you know, let me be clear. It's not like I haven't been asked. It's like, you know, the men weren't, you know, <laughs> looking to be in a relationship with me. But it was either when I was younger, you know, when you're younger on the apps, you don't really know about things. You know, you want more and then they're on there for other stuff. So that kind yeah. of doesn't really work out. And then it's like, because I'm a Libra, I'm like, my house, my sign is relationship. So I'm definitely very serious about those. But so prior to, I never really was with anyone. So I just was like, okay, I'm cool, you know, being single. But also I think what I put out in the atmosphere was, oh, I'm good being single, I'm fine being alone, which I was at the time, and I still somewhat am, but I think yeah. you have to be careful what you put out there because that, that's what comes back. After, I mean, the DMs are, you know, interesting. <laughs> the, that sort of stuff has changed. But <laughs> now it's like, like, do they want you for like the right reasons? You know, because sometimes they just want to have you as like a play toy. So it's like, do you really see me seriously like as a person you know right i think it's like yes i am the doll but look i, I, I you're not gonna pick me up off the shelf when you want to they put me back down you know i think it's that sort of thing i think it definitely kind of changed the guys that were interested in me but i'm still very much like i'm not just gonna be i don't want to be with somebody just to be with somebody if the situation is not right then i'll just be alone like you know it's like if i'm broke sad depressed lonely I don't need to be in a relationship and be like that. There are sometimes where people yeah. that be in a relationship and then they're broke, sad, and depressed. I'm like, why are you all this with somebody? Just be single. I could do bad all by myself. So I just kind of learned to do bad all by myself. Like there's guys yeah. that hit me up, and, you know, they're cute to flirt with, play with. I mean, that stuff is fine. But as far as anything serious, no. And, but also you got to think as far as being like a queen, most of the time the dating scene, the kids aren't really interested in dating the queens you know they're not so yeah. and then like that's what happened one time we were at a show and then everyone around was like oh this one guy oh I th oh he's cute i think he's interested in you and stuff and when i talked to him somewhere outside i realized i'm like he's interested in me like oh okay he reveres me he admires me as like you know entertainer and stuff it's not yeah on a, ooh, i want to you know so it's just like knowing the difference because sometimes especially when you're an entertainer like out in the public it's the difference between someone admiring entertaining or liking you for your entertainment and for they want to pursue something with you so yeah that 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 there's a difference with that how well, about you do you think yours changed with with entertainment well before being an entertainer there was nobody like <laughs> I, I i hadn't done i hadn't done anything mm. and then like afterwards well i will say this at living in the hood in Orlando, <laughs> it was That's be, funny. being a thicker person with a fat ass. Ooh. Um, I would mm. say I've only been in one serious, like, long term relationship, but like, mm. other than that, hmm, how do I put this? I'm not a saint. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Okay. So mama has lived before. Okay. Well, I had to, cause like, again, growing up Catholic, like suppressing so much. It's like once I got out, cause like so many people were like, they're like, I had sex for the first time at 15. I'm like, must've been fucking nice. I was like 22, 23 girl. So like, Oh wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you were a late, late to the party. Well, of course I was, because, like, as somebody pointed out to me, it's like, when you're not, how do I put this without being problematic? Um, skinny? When you're not okay. skinny, people are not, like, Fair. interested in you until they get older. And then, especially black guys start realizing, like, oh, uh, as I say, realizing kind of what Sir Mix-a-Lot was talking about. Mm-hmm. And baby got back. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, well, honestly, I think, uh, just in general, I think as you get older, your attraction should and can change. Because, like, what you thought was attractive at, like, 15 isn't the same thing you think at, like, 20, then 25, 30. You know, I think as yeah. you get older, your attraction opens up. Because when you're younger, it's a lot more binary, a lot, like, a lot smaller, you know. And then when you get older, you're like, well, actually, this is attractive. And hey, actually, that, you know, it should evolve as you evolve. You know, I think it's, it's it's different. So I definitely think 
which is it's which is good. And I think especially in the past few years, with like the body positivity movement and seeing more different bodies as attractive. And that, I think that's very, very important because, yeah. yeah, when they will put, you know, bigger bodies down. And also it depends on your demographic and where you're at, because if you're in an area where everyone looks like GQ models and like FHM models, then it's going to be like, well, dang. But, you know, if you're where it's like, OK, yeah. everyone looks more like regular everyday people it, that that changes it as well. Yeah, that's also my thing is one of the reasons I want to leave this area is because <laughs> leave this area. I really do because there's so many fucking. I, I don't blame you because yeah, there, there, too... there are too many fucking white people here. Like that's honestly. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. What's wrong with the white people? Do tell. What's wrong with white people? I mean, <laughs> well, okay. Um... <laughs> You How have to elaborate. You just can't throw that out there and like drop the mic and be like, "Too many white people like that." Like, <laughs> yeah. You know. Okay, fine. We'll get nasty. The dick's too small. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words, America. Uh, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with fun size. There, I, and I will say fun size. There's nothing wrong with fun size. Well, well, I mean, okay. Let, I'll, I will, I will elaborate on this fact. Being that I am a bigger person, there is a certain size to where it is too small. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that does make sense. That's fair. Okay, fair. You're not trying to size shame them. Their member. Oh, I see. And my, and, and my, and my joke is. I have sex with white guys twice a year. I call it community service. Um. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are some 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 white guys that you know are are packing below the waist. There are some. I know. Some. I but, know. You know, it is a little. It, it's far and few between. But I see it as a duty. Well, you can just keep them as friends. There's nothing wrong with making friends with them, and that's it. I'm not, not with say, benefits, just friends. Look, I'm not saying. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying that I don't have friends and like mm. I have problems with like what I would say mm. I have problems you don't, you don't have issues you don't have issues getting some action I see okay yeah it's like well actually I don't I don't even need that much because like I've got me friends <laughs> with benefits I'm good but <laughs> lucky you well we're, we're not all as blessed lucky you <laughs> That, but you have like a consistent one, so it's not like you have to try and like where's Waldo? Look for him every day. Okay, you have a consistent. No, no, you don't. I don't. I don't look around as much anymore. It's. it's well, wait, so do, wait. Do you have? Do you have a consistent one? Yes. Have I been with him recently? No. Your bitch has been busy. Like our schedules. Have oh, okay. Been. That's why. Okay, haven't. Okay. I think that's awesome to have like a consistent. And you know what happens? Because a lot of guys that hit me up, they usually aren't in the air. That's why I have a lot yeah. of issues too. Because like if yeah. I stayed in West Palm, Miami, Orlando, oh girl, yeah. <laughs> it would be over. Like, like you know, the you know, they, yeah. you know, they can appreciate the girl there. So yeah. I think also depends. Yeah, your demographic and yeah, where you're at depends on. You know the hookup ratio. So, but right. at least you do have someone consistent. I do think that is nice. Could have yeah. someone you just have understanding with. You know what they like. They know what you like, and you know we don't have any issues. So I do think that that is important. Yeah. And I will not say too much more. All I will say is that I'm pretty sure you know him. Anyway. Oh. <sighs> oh. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. talk. After. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. All right. So, what's your relationship? to drugs and alcohol Ooh, um i'm not really because the thing is i'm the type of person i like to be like super like always like in control and on top of stuff pause yeah so as far as drinking when i'm at the bar my my, my go-to can i have a sprite on the rocks please so you know i'm very much like that type of girl like when i would go out back in my days you know right before rona came it would be like a year straight of going out like me and Alyssa monroe I would go, we would go out, we would do, we would do shots of fireball. Yeah. So that was definitely the tea. Drugs, not anything too much. I know, I don't know how stuff is there, but at least in the St. Louis County, the girls like the ski slopes, they like the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> you know, that they, they, they like um, the booger sugar, the, the powder, you know, substance. I, I've never partaked, okay. I've been around it and I'm like, 
oh, okay, this is what we're doing. But I personally, I don't judge them, but I just am like, that's not for me. Because I know people that are on it and it's just like, they're too, like, I'm already on top of stuff normally. So I don't want to be around like, you know, it, it would just be too, too, too much. I'm enough as it is. Um, as far as Laganja Astrangia, I did it twice when I was 14. It, it's not for me either because I know they have different like strains right. and levels of it, but eh, maybe it helps with anxiety. I heard that. Maybe I would use it for that, but not really because I feel like it's such like a big thing in the community and especially with entertainment, but I'm just kind of like, eh. and if I ever was and when it, if I ever was, I, it wouldn't be with the, you know, with the group of the people because everyone talks too much and we all like you know it's like oh okay i saw you for, for a show but i saw you doing lines in the bathroom last week too hey girl okay you ready to pro-? you know it would just be like too yeah and you know my stuff i'm doing i ain't about to be doing around the room you know with the crew it's just you know personally personally but i don't judge yeah. people that do even like smoking cigarettes hey my mom's a smoker want her to stop but hey if you need the nicotine to get through the day and it sends you know that's fine or now we everyone do, does those uh vapes it, it wears yeah. me out it's like y'all in these vapes yeah, I Just mean, not like, like, I'm not much of a drinker either, and, like, mm. I've I will never... drink it if it tastes good. If it tastes good, yeah. I will. Yeah. Which, again, same, but as, <laughs> as I said, I don't drink much. Um, Drugs. Right. I always say the one thing that I abuse, and I say this because I don't think people think you can abuse this, is ibuprofen. Uh-huh. <laughs> fair well what kind of chronic pain are you in well what happens is it's not as bad now i have um bone spurs in the heels of both of my feet oh so like before i got to a doctor i was popping as i predicted like 18 24 a day whoa mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah you could yeah. you could have been on intervention that that's a whole lot that that is definitely yeah. a lot wow it's not Whoa. but it's like but it's like i was luckily i don't work a job where i'm on my feet now thank god right right but like when i was those like eight hour days of like having to like mm. constantly be on your feet and it's like there was a point when i left my last job i was barely like screw doing drag as i always say i was barely able to walk oh wow that's serious oh wow Gosh. Like so I no, used no, to like no hobble, joke. hobble around. Yeah. Oh no, that is no joke. Wow. Oh, well, uh, well, are you doing better now? Oh yeah, def- definitely better now. Like I'm, like in a lot less pain, and all this. But it's like, it's good. It's always good. It's like that's one thing that like Selma and I like honestly have like one of the things we bonded over because like oh yeah of her pain and like mine is mm-hmm. like. Oh yeah, of course, of course. And especially trying to be a performer with that and trying to go on like your normal life with that. But I know she, Mama now does, now Selma, she does stay medicated with her pain. So, well, she yeah. probably still be medicated without the pain. But yeah, I see, I see. <laughs> well, have you tried, <laughs> have you actually tried any sort of like non ibuprofen methods to help or are you just strictly? Um. Well, I was going to the doctor and I was getting like, he was giving me this like pill that like, I took one a day, and it's like it didn't really work. It's like I ended up having to say ibuprofen on top of it, which you're not supposed Ooh. to do. But like, Uh-oh. that's but not like, good. But it's like eventually, I remember when I quit. Like the HR person at my old job was like, "Thank God you're finally quitting." It's like I'm like I can't just leave without another job. Like I didn't even make money. <laughs> yes, Ripley's believe it or not. Yes, yes, that's true. That's very true. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that is funny. But it's like I I didn't want because here's the thing. My doctor kept on like trying and trying and trying stuff, and eventually, like once we got towards like November, December, it's it's like the doctor said basically, I've done all I can done for you. You <clears throat> you need a different job. Like you need a job where you're not. Oh wow. Job. Oh wow, that that sucks. That definitely sucks. Because I did everything. I did, I did. I did. I did the cortisone shots. I did everything. Like <laughs> no, none of it. It just was like, look, it's it's not gonna work. It's definitely not gonna yeah. work. Oh boy. Well, at least you could say you exhausted all your options, pretty much. Yeah. 
And plus, I was not mad to leave that place. Like, right. I was like, when I left, I'm like, hallelujah. Anyway, we were not heartbroken. <laughs> no, of course not. Like, <laughs> I don't think I've been heartbroken leaving any job. Like, right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know what. Oh, and the thing is, you're the one that left. You didn't get the boot, so it's like, look, um, you know. I'm controlling the narrative on this one. They they didn't tell me to sashay away. Okay. Right. <laughs> so. Okay, so I got two more. So. Okay. What are your What are your thoughts on how the LGBT community is being treated today? It it is very very sad because it actually puts me in mind with the thing on the with the barn. Um, it was so, so this is actually a perfect segue to it too. So that works yeah. out. Works out. Um. It's, it's really, really sad because I remember, uh, which I've never spoken about this or anything. So a friend had booked me um, to do both of her mom's, uh, their like reception uh, wedding party. So it was going to be at a local place here. It's called The Barn. And I literally don't stay too far from it. So it's like a nice little barn, a little, you know, rustic feel, you know, that whole sort of stuff. So it was two ladies that are, that are married and, you know, that they, 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 okay. The one, the one of the wives was going to surprise the other wife with the drag show. So my friend invited me over to their house. We went over all the stuff. So I was like, okay, great. So the and I had invited my house, which they were going to be coming from further away. And you know, we had talked about money. Everything was situated. You know, what song that everybody was going to do? Yeah. Sent to the DJ. We it was like on point. So the day of, I would say maybe ooh, two hours before we were supposed to go on, and maybe like an hour before I was about, and I was literally just going to get ready to head out like 30, 45 minutes before. I got a call from uh, my friend's mom saying. Okay, d don't come. The place is, and that was in February, mind you. So that was even before all of the foolishness was starting. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, don't come. They're making a big stink about it. So, and I, I don't have an issue with the place not wanting to have drag entertainment there. That's fine. That's their, that's their establishment. They could pick and choose who they want to perform there. The issue yeah. was the fact that obviously that messes with my money and their money too, because we already got dressed. So we didn't get paid for doing that, obviously. And then yeah. also, it's you guys will take the gay dollar, but you don't really want to have them there. So you're okay with ha having the reception for two women, which are probably not. I think they just wanted, they yeah. were just okay with having them there because they couldn't, they don't want the discrimination thing. But them having a drag show, it was like, okay, no, 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 you, you're not allowed to do that. And it sucks that local businesses like that, like, you know, you say, okay, support your local businesses, but well, my local business doesn't really support me or who I am. Cause there are some people, yeah. this is their only, you know, source of income and way to make money. And I think it's so unfortunate that, well, I heard RuPaul say back in old interviews, like when the pendulum comes swinging one way to the right, it's gonna come crashing back to the left. You know, it's like, no. unfortunately, these are the times that we're in. So, and I never want to talk about that only because I was just like, you know, stuff happens, you charge into the game. But my barber's like, you know what, you should, I was like, I was gonna go blast about on Facebook, but I'll blast them here with Prince Electro Diamond. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I think it's unfortunate, and that's another part of when I went to the uh, when I went to the to the march. Uh, when I got like my little interview, I hope it gets found somewhere. But I was like, it's it's like it's a thing with his repeating itself. First, it starts with the blacks. <laughs> yeah. Once we handle them, then it starts to go to women with the reproductive rights, and also trans men can you know bear kids, but yeah. you know the reproductive rights, and then it starts with the alphabet community. It's like it's like a wash, rinse, and repeat. There's so many other things that we have going on in the world and like people that live in Florida can't even afford to live in Florida anymore because we're getting priced out. But yet we want to talk about uh, drag being around kids and the whole, like, it's like the craziness right now. It's insane. Like, I remember we were at the march, we were walking to start marching. There was kids on the other side playing or something. I was like this, I'm like, look, I, I was trying to run away. I'm like, look, I do not want to be around any children. I'm not trying to get arrested. I'm like, please, it, it, it's insane. So I feel like there is, the reason why they want to talk about us is because it helps not talk about things that are really going on in the world. And we really need to talk about gun control and, you know, the housing crisis and why, right. is, why are people still homeless in 2023? And what are we like? There's some other more important things we really can talk about and what brings us together instead of what makes us different. So I think that it, it's really unfortunate, but I think where put as like a placeholder because it's like, okay, if you talk about something in the LGBT community, that's gonna get people riled up. And while we're really over here doing a bunch of pool, you know, it's 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 unfortunate, but it, it's always hits repeating itself. It starts with black women gay. But it, it is like wash or and repeat. Like how do you know it's like like really, you know, you're not tired of this. We can't talk about something else <laughs> that's actually important and stuff that's really affecting the nation. 
it, it, it's sad. I think it's sad, especially in Florida. Where Florida is such like a melting pot, but it's such like a backwards yeah. melting pot. It, it's really, yeah. really crazy. I mean, I get that. This is also, what was it? I posted this. Okay, so I don't know if you know this story, but um, mm -hmm. so there was a um, trans activist who was invited to the White House named... Um, oh, yes, I, I heard Ro a little bit about that. Rose Montoya, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm following her, and I got into it. I basically, what I posted on like a comment of in like her comment section was, I'm like, in my opinion, I don't think she did anything wrong. But like, that's just me. Right. And like, right. I said, like, there is so much more important shit like going on right now in terms of trans people. Why are right. you all focusing on this? Right. I get it. No, I get it. I well, I think. Look, Obama could have had a bra on. I think also we have to take yeah. accountability because we sometimes will play into the narratives ourselves. You see what I'm saying? If we're not yeah. careful. We end up because then because then that's what the media is going to put out there. So it's like, but that's why when we went on that when we went onto the uh, the march, it was like Darcel made a clip. It's going to be a peaceful protest. If anyone's acting a fool, you're you're going to get the police is going to take care of you. If you do not have one of these shirts on, you you, you can't. You know, I yeah. think I get I get I do get the point they were trying to make, and I think it was beautiful. And that's yes, we do not want to demonize trans bodies. We want to humanize them. Yeah. Also, we just have to be careful how we do act in the media because. That's going to be the headline. They're going to, it's going to, you know, it's going to automatically, instead of the message of it, it's going to be, oh, they were doing this. And then that also turns us into the freaks and stuff again. And that's another issue that I do think we have in the community. <laughs> the pride stuff. I Look, I'm all for us living free, being in our bodies. But the thing is, how come when it's, we're, we're trying to pride events, we always have to be naked? I'm like... <laughs> it's a bit confusing. <laughs> like, well, you know, I'm saying like there'll be pride things. There was a lovely girl; she was at the pride. I mean, our, our our pride had ended up being adult anyway, so it was fine. But some of the pride things, I'm like, we don't have to just come out in like rainbow underwear. We can put on, you know. There's some of the things where it's like we it like we'll play into it. It'll make us look like, uh, it's like no, let's let's try not to, you know. We'll save that for the after party. In the day, and when it's nighttime, sure, put on put on your pride thong and panties. But during the day, if we're having pride events, we could, we can try and keep, you know, because then it makes it look like oh, the whole groomers thing, which really we don't want people's kids. That's stupid. But yeah. you know, I think we also have to take accountability as ourselves in a community. Be like, look, we need to be smarter because any little thing we do, they're gonna try and flip it, and then it changes. So we also have to be careful how we move in the media as well. But yeah, I definitely think yeah, there are definitely bigger things to worry about than some of the stuff that they put out there as a headline but hey they, they want clicks and views so well okay i'm a i'm gonna a little bit disagree with izzy here because like the thing of like why everybody has to be naked during the day i say do you boo like work no do you do you but if there's kids there there okay. that's that with any event if there are kids involved we all need to have our clothes on whether it's a rainbow event or not that's what i'm saying you see yeah Okay, okay. Because the I, thing is, because the thing is, it's going to look like, oh, well, why are they, it's just private. Why are they naked knowing it's a family? You see what I'm saying? I'm, right. I have no issues with the nudity. I'm saying if it's supposed to be a family friendly event, let's try to, you know, be a little more, you know, you know, that's all. That's all. I'm not, I, yes, of course, free, free the nip. I'm all for it. Well, if it's an adult event during the day, hey, you go, come on, whatever you want to, a pasty and a G string, yeah. hey, live your life. But when it's supposed to be a family, because then it's going to make it seem like to the masses, oh, it's family friendly. But they're why are they? They're naked. It's just supposed to be about you. See what I'm saying? Okay, that that part I get. That from I that mean, part I, perspective. Yeah, that part makes sense. Yeah, I would say I I I have no comment on that because like my thing is, don't ever invite me to perform in front of your kids. I'm gonna fucking swear. <laughs> like I I know myself. <laughs> It's literally as as <laughs> as, as not Izzy a family says, friendly program. Half, yeah, as Izzy said, I like walking around half naked now. Like that's just yes, how. Yes. yes, that's fair. That's very fair. That's true. That's very true. And it's not like and it's not like performers are like, oh, I can't wait to perform in front of kids. Some queens do that. Some queens that's like their and performers that's their go to. They love to do like Disney reenactments and you know they're geared towards they're like drag queens, but they're yeah. geared towards children. That's fine. But typically, most performers aren't like hankering to go perform in front of kids. I mean, you know, nothing against them. I, I enjoy, I, I can, you know, you know how to 
maneuver with it, but it can be a little tricky because yeah. So it, it sucks. Cause I have nieces and nephews that they've gone to shows that they like to, but they can't now. Cause imagine them going to come see me and then I end up getting arrested like that. Just the thought of that's freaking crazy. Yeah. Like that's insane. As I say, everyone do your shows. I want to be able yeah. to do bitch. I want to be able to do bitch better have my money in Anaconda. Like as you should. Yeah. <laughs> so to my final question, what's the biggest misconception okay. about you? Ooh, eesh, yikes, zoinkies. Um, you know what? I don't really think there is too many, only because I, I've i done a good job of kind of curating my social media content to be kind of a little bit more private. So I kind of post the stuff, because, you know, because the thing is, when you're an entertainer, trying to post personal stuff can kind of be like a conflict, especially if it's like... uh business or professional kind of page but you're posting personal stuff so it could get like a little bit confusing yeah. so i kind of just like i just kind of like okay i'm gonna just put out the stuff i want people to see and log off because it could be a bit like too much drama on there so uh, even people even like the performers i'm around they're like i'll perform for a little and then i, I disappear <laughs> and it's like yeah. i kind of like that because it keeps people interested in you and also you need that time to recharge and kind of like reset your battery. So I think I've done a pretty good job at like making sure there isn't any really any misconceptions because I'm putting stuff out there that I want to be clear with. And yeah, and I feel like I feel like I, I usually I, I'm doing a pretty decent job of controlling how I'm seen overall. Overall, I think. Yeah, I definitely think. Yeah, I definitely think I, I try to. I try to for the most part, you know, right. it's tricky, but I'm like, look, I'm careful about what I post, what I put out there, because stuff can be taken the wrong way. And also, especially if you are, you know, trying to do stuff with your performer, you want people to focus on that, like not the drama and stuff that you're in. That's not for me. So I feel like I usually I usually set people straight. And the thing is, what I learned a long time ago when I first started doing performances, I was like, oh, OK, I need to go live. I need to break down uh, what I'm doing, what I'm doing, the difference between this and that. I was like, wait, no one's asked me anything, first of all. And second of all, it's my own insecurities, own stuff in my head, making it seem like I need to go clarify something that no one's asked about. It's like, I'm not comfortable doing this yet. So yeah. I feel like I need to make declarations. And I'm like, you know what? Just let it be. I put this stuff out there. However you take it is how you take it. But mm. I know my heart. I know my intentions. And if you have any questions, the DM and inbox is open. So, yeah. I totally <laughs> get that because, like, not necessarily as much as like when we covering stuff, but like when I used to do like originals, it was so like, it's like, I would say something shocking in a song and it's like, and it's like, no, it's like, you got to focus, like just focus yeah. on the lyrics. You'll get it. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, that's why I honestly felt I had to start doing a podcast. It's like, well, maybe I got to dump <laughs> shit down for you even more. So it's like, you actually understand yeah. what I'm saying. So, so people actually get yeah where you're coming from and get your heart. Because, yeah, sometimes, it, and I think that can be like a miss because if people don't know you, they don't get your sense of humor. They may take things the wrong yeah. way. So, but that, but that just means, look, they have no sense of humor and that they need to work on that themselves. Yeah. That's not your problem. So, yes. yeah, I, I could see that. Yes, and I'm actually nice. Unlike Izzy, who's just trying to make me <laughs> seem to be extremely shady, I'm actually nice. Like, oh, my gosh. I mean, you can be shady and nice at the same time, you know. Yeah. It's 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 like you you gotta have that duality, you know. It, you're not a you're not a boring experience, that's for sure. Work. Thank you. Anyway, okay, you're welcome. With that, with, with that being said, it's been great having you on. I can't wait to like Thank you for having me. I can't wait to like de drag a little bit and just talk to you a little bit because like yes, you 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 know that experience, the feeling of like taking off the wig and just. <laughs> Yes, yes, I can yeah. breathe. I can breathe. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. No, but I am so. I thank you for having me on your platform. Of I course. am so appreciative of this opportunity. Hey, you making a way for yourself and being like, look, I'm gonna control the narrative. I'm gonna, hey, put it out there. Yeah. And you know, put put the community up. So I definitely think that that's great, and we definitely need more talent like that. You know, in the media, locally and also internationally. So I definitely yes. think you're you're definitely onto the right page. Thank you. And with that being said, this is Gay Out the City. I'm your host, Prince Electro Diamond, and I hope you've enjoyed. <laughs>